In this section, we're going to take a look at dimensions. And dimensions are a feature within Dynamics Nav that allow you to add tags or attributes to ledger entries. So we can add these tags to the general ledger entries, to customer ledger entries, vendor ledger entries, item ledger entries. It basically provides a, a way in which you can use these tags to provide financial reporting and information about products, about sales, about all of the things that you may want to uh, segregate out and get information on for financial reporting. So we're going to uh, navigate to the dimensions and they're under financial setup and here we have dimensions and as you can see we already have several set up in this Kronos database uh, they come with the database and they're kind of pre-configured and um, you, you can basically take something like for example a department perhaps you wanted to uh, tag expense account in, uh, entries by various departments and we could look at the values for these and they have administration production and sales set up out here you could have as many of these as you want by clicking new you could add a new one here but uh, many companies want to be able to see what their expenses are for their administrative production and sales department so these attributes allow you to uh, configure a way to tag all of your transactions with one of these attributes so to show you how to uh, add a new one here, I'm just going to click New, and I'm going to call this Marketing. And that's all that's involved in setting up a new uh, value under a dimension code. This one happens to be Departments. So now I can uh, I could get uh, a, an income statement that would show me what my marketing expense is as well. So let's take a look at some of the ways that these uh, these dimensions can actually be uh, used in real life. So if we take a look at something like the business group here and we look at the values, maybe we want to get reporting on uh, sales by our customers that are uh, home-based uh, home customers, industrial, office, intercompany, so that I could segregate, segregate out my sales and see how much I'm doing with um, industrial versus uh, office versus home types of customers. I also could, or types of business, I also could look at my customer segment here and I could look at large business, medium business, small business, institutions, and segregate these out for purposes of uh, creating uh, marketing campaigns and so on and so forth. I also could take a look at something like an area and these dimensions are very powerful in the fact that we can actually create hierarchical structures. So here we want to look at business in Europe and in America. And so the America, we have North and South America, and then we have a beginning and an ending total. And we can look at uh, how this has arrived. So the ending total is line number 60 through 85. So it's 60 through 85 that it's totaling up. In Europe, we have Northern Europe, and then we have the rest of Europe, which is Southern Europe here. And in Northern Europe, we have Northern uh, Europe EU and non-EU. And so we've segregated these out again. And then in the totals, we're totaling up just the lines that relate to Northern Europe. And then we're totaling up the lines for uh, all of Europe in including Southern Europe. So these uh, dimensions can be hierarchical and uh, can be extremely powerful to segregate out your uh, business by the type of information that you want to collect. Let's take another uh, look at another feature that's available in dimensions and that is by closing this we're going to go to dimension combinations here. And what this has really done is it's opened up all of my dimensions in a uh, uh, in a vertical row for us and then across the top we have the same dimensions horizontally <clears throat> and what we can do with this is when we look at it we see that some of these don't have anything uh, marked on them some of them have limited one of them has blocked so my choices are either blank limited or blocked and when I've um, uh, when I have a combination blocked, I cannot do a transaction that has a combination of a customer group and a project because I don't do projects for customers. I only do them through vendors. So 
uh, this, this combination is blocked. And when I click on one of these and go to the little ellipsis here, I can select whether it's limited, no limits, or blocked, and set these uh, various parameters. So let's take a look at why we might want to do something like this. Let's take a look at the area here and salespeople. So if I go into here and I set this to limited, and then I click on the little ellipsis again. It says, do you want to see all of the lists of values? I'm going to say yes. And now I have my salespeople up here. And let's just assume that JR, um, I don't want JR to be able to do uh, business in North America. So I could come down under North America down here. And what I can do with this is I could say that this is blocked. So JR can't do business in North or South America and he is set up to strictly do sales in Europe. So now when I'm looking at this, he's, he's only able to uh, do European sales. And perhaps with this next one, what I want to do here is I actually want to come in and block him from doing business in Europe, and then he's set up to only do um, sales in uh, America. So I can control who can do sales in various areas and who can uh, uh, and what kinds of combinations I'm going to allow to work out here. And this is, uh, this is how the uh, combinations for various dimensions help you control uh, who can do what and what combinations can actually be posted. So we've created an array of all kinds of tags that we can apply to various transactions out here. But um, it seems as though it might be, uh, it would be very difficult to manage this. And in essence, it really isn't. So what we need to do is go look at how these are actually applied. So if I go out to uh, example here, the sales area, and I look at customers. Let's just take this customer, the Canon group here. And what, we, what you do with your customers is that you go out and you apply dimensions to them. So I say, hey, this customer is in this area, which I believe is uh, northern uh, North Europe. And they're in a medium-sized business. And they're in a department called sales. So every time I do a transaction with this customer, it will attach these attributes to the customer's transactions. And if I do the same thing and I take a look, for example, at my vendors, uh, I can do precisely the same thing. Let's take a look at this particular vendor and I can navigate and take a look at its dimensions. And here we've said that this is just in uh, the area 30 here. So this is a Northern Europe country but, uh, uh, purchase, but we could have more attributes attached to this if we would choose. We just have a single one here. And uh, last but not least, if we go out of here and take a look at our departments, uh, or excuse me, our items, we can also attach things to items. So for example, if I were looking at uh, this particular item, this is a chair. And if we edit this item, and we can navigate over and take a look at its dimensions, this has been set up with a dimension called products and a dimension value code of chairs. So every time this is sold, it will attribute this to our sales of chairs. And I could have this uh, other ones that are here. It could be, uh, the, for example, the table. This has a dimension set up on it, a product dimension of table, I would believe. So let's just take a quick look. And yep, product and tables. So I'm segregating out my sales by product types, and those attributes are attached to items. So let's see how all of these pieces fit together. I've created a purchase order out here. So I'm going to go to Purchase Orders, and I'm going to edit this one. And on the header of this document, what I have are uh, dimensions that I can look at. So I look at the dimensions on the header, and these are the same dimensions that we looked at on this vendor earlier. It had an area here of uh, North Europe. It has a, it's an industrial business group. It was in a sales campaign of summer. And it has an additional one that's been added of purchaser uh, for Richard. And the reason for that is that Richard has been added as, a, uh, as the purchaser on this particular document. You can see that the purchaser code has come across automatically from the vendor card 
So it's added a dimension to give me sales by uh, salesperson or purchases by purchasing agent. If I take a look at the lines that are here and I go to line dimensions, the line dimension has all of the dimensions from the header. It inherits those. Plus it has the products dimension for the line item itself, which is a chair. And if we look at the uh, table, we'll see the same kind of thing. Here we have dimensions for the, all of the things from the header plus product tables. So these dimensions are being added to transactions based upon the way that they're configured on our customers, vendors, and items. So when we post this after everything is set up, we do these postings, all of these transactions are being tagged as uh, attributes on the general ledger entries, the customer ledger entries, vendor ledger entries, item ledger entries, by virtue of the fact that we've set things up properly and now they're all being distributed out uh, exactly the way that we would want them to be so that we can um, slice and dice our accounting information to give us the information that we need. So I'd like to uh, illustrate for you how these transactions actually work and that they do actually work. So what I'm going to do is exit out of here and uh, I'm going to go to the chart of accounts. And in the chart of accounts, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to filter on a single item, which is uh, advertising expense. So in our chart of accounts, we currently have $221,000 and change out here in advertising. And what I can do is that I can use these attributes to see what it would be for various departments out here. So I can add a a limiting total and I can select a department filter. And when I come in here I can see all of the values that I have for my attribute department. So I could say uh, administration for example and when I tab off of this these numbers will change because it will only show the values of the things for the uh, that have the tag uh, administration. So I have 44,000 and change for administration. And if I go in here, for example, for production, I have 66,000 and change for production. And for sales, I have uh, 110,000. So the advertising expense is being allocated out to these different department codes. And consequently, these are available for doing all sorts of uh, slicing and dicing of my financial data. So to illustrate for you that uh, this works in reports as well, uh, we're going to search for a trial balance and we're going to look at the detailed trial balance. And uh, what I'm going to look at is that same account number that I had a moment ago. And I'm going to um, look at the period through January 1 through 1231 of uh, 2018 because this is the data that's currently in this. So I don't have any kind of department filter here. When we pre preview this, it comes up with our 221,000 and change, just as it did from the chart of accounts as we looked at a moment ago. And uh, I'm going to do this again, only this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a, uh, I'm going to put in a department filter here. So I'm going to pick department filter and I'm going to pick administration, for example. And now when I preview this for this same account number and same date range, of course, it filters like it did before. So I have 44,000 and change for the uh, for this account based upon administration. And if I go back out here and I put in a different filter instead of administration, I pick uh, sales, for example. I'll get my 110 back like I had before on the same account number, same date range. And now it comes in at my 110 and change. So it's, uh, <clears throat> it's important to realize that these uh, dimension attributes that are tagged on to all of the entries that we have work in all of our statements as well as in the, uh, the general ledger itself. And uh, there's a couple of important things that we need to take a look at that kind of limit how we can see these, though. So what we want to do here is go to the general ledger setup and we can search for it. And in the general ledger setup, there is a section that talks about uh, dimensions. And 
there are eight shortcut dimensions that are set up here. You can see that these go up through uh, shortcut dimension 8 code. I don't have anything populated here, but we could. And there are two of these shortcut dimensions, 1 and 2, which are designated as global dimensions. And here we've set those up as department and project, which are two of the various uh, dimensions that are out here. And if we wanted to change these, we'd have to go up to this little icon at the top. It says change global dimensions. And in here, this is where you set your dimensions. You can pick whatever dimensions you want to be uh, your global dimensions. They've picked department and project. And what's important about this is that the global dimensions are tagged and visible on every transaction, uh, ledger transaction that's out here. So if you go to the general ledger entries, the customer ledger entries, vendor, item ledger entries, any of those ledger entry tables, you will see these two global dimensions of department and project and see what the values are in them. All of the other ones are not visible on the ledger entries themselves. You have to drill into the dimensions to actually see them. So let's go take a look at what I'm talking about here. If I go to the accounts receivable area, for example, and I drill into the uh, ledger entries here, this is the department code that we just talked about. So this is global dimension one. This is the project code. Now there are no project codes that are being used here, but these are available to see in this particular view. And if I customize my view here, uh, I can't pick any of those other dimensions to add into this view. They, they are, you, they're not, you cannot add them here. Uh, however, what I can do is that on any given line that I have, I can go up and look at the dimensions for it. And as you can see, there are area, business group, customer group, and salesperson that are already, that are also attached to this individual um, general ledger entry. And of course we have the department code of sales. So these attributes are being attached to each of these entries even though they are not uh, visible and you can't see them on the line here. Here you can see there are less on this one. And uh, so you can do reporting by them but you can't necessarily see them on the ledger entries themselves. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, remember to click below and subscribe for more.